Hello and welcome to Mal Makes. Today we're painting Pac-Man from a first person perspective. This is the full version. If you're interested in the time lapse, you can click on the card here. Otherwise, let's get started. So I've sketched in my plan for this piece and um, I wanted to make it look like you were actually Pac-Man going through the maze getting the pellets and the fruit. So um, in my first sketch here, I made it very structured. Um, my two-point perspective marks are equal distance from the side. They're um, right in the middle of my canvas. The center line is right here in the center. So it has a lot of structure, and I do like that because Pac-Man is really angular with all of the different turns. Um, so I started to draw that in and color it, and I did like it, but I did want to explore some other things um, just to see how they would look. So down here, I did two-point perspective with a low horizon line, but it looks like the pellets are going over your head, and I didn't really like that look. Um, so I tried a high horizon line over here, and I did like it, but it doesn't feel like you're down in the maze. It feels like you're floating a little bit above it. And then over here, I tried to skew my center line a little bit to the right. That's the same line here in the middle. I just pushed it over to the right. And I like how it looks that way, but it really messes with this left side, and it's kind of awkward in how to draw it and where your lines should go. So I decided I'm going to stick with my original here. And I decided to go with two-point perspective because I've already done one-point perspective with my moonside piece, and I thought it would be nice to show off two-point. So the first thing I want to do is measure um, halfway down my canvas, and this is an 18 um, tall canvas, so it's going to be right at the 9 inch mark. And I'm also going to draw in my vertical line here, and because it's 24 this way, it's going to be right at 12. The other thing I want to do with this is I want to figure out where my vanishing points are going to be because I'm going to base everything off that. So I'm looking at this and kind of figuring out where looks like a good place to have them. And I'm thinking about four and a half inches, just right about here. And I'm going to do the same on this. I also want to mark how tall I want this corner to be. So I'm going to line up my ruler with it and then kind of guess how tall I want it to be. So if I come down two and a half inches from the top, and then come up two and a half inches. Um, that's about how tall I think I want this all to be. So with these four dots marked in, I can start to fill in the base for this two-point perspective. Now, the left side of this part here is all going to go towards this vanishing point. So I'm going to line that dot up with the bottom of this corner, and then I'm going to draw a line all the way off the canvas, and I'm doing that in particular because I want to start to fill in the left side of this as well and I want it to be equal on both sides. So if I do this, I want this top line of the left side to line up with it. Then I can switch my ruler and go the opposite way from the top of this line to my vanishing point and then all the way down the left. And then I can do the same over here, lining up this with the vanishing point and drawing it off the canvas and then the top dot with the vanishing point and then down here off the canvas. What I want to do next is start to mark in where all of my hallways are going to be that kind of merge off of these two that go to the perspective lines. So I'm going to use my T-square for that because they need to be straight up and down and they need to be parallel to the other ones I have vertical. So I'm going to take my T-square here and figure out how far I want this left side of this chunk to be. Maybe I want it about here. And then I'm going to go from each of these orthogonal lines from the bottom to the top one and draw in a straight vertical line so that this is the left side and then this is the right side around this corner. But I want to have a gap before I have my next bit of wall here, so then I'm going to take the ruler again and kind of figure out how far I want this hallway to go down. Maybe it should be about this wide, and I'm going to do another parallel line from orthogonal to orthogonal this way. So this is going to be the hallway where I have the ghost down, so he'll kind of sit somewhere in here. And if I don't like it, I can just kind of redraw that line. Maybe I want it to be a bit bigger. And then I can just take a wet towel because I'm using chalk and erase any of this that I don't like in here. I also don't need my horizon line anymore um, just because it's going to be completely covered by all of these blocks. So I can work on erasing it, but I need to be careful I don't accidentally erase any of my orthogonals or my vanishing point or anything else I need. In order to make this hallway look like it's going back in space, um, the top parts of it I'm going to have go to this vanishing point. 
So I'm gonna switch to my regular ruler and line the top part of that up with this vanishing point. And then just draw a line downwards and then do the same for the base part down here. And that's the basic rules for two-point perspective. If it's vertical, it should be straight up and down vertical, square to the canvas. They should all be parallel to each other all the way across the canvas. And everything else is orthogonal and should go to a vanishing point. Um, and basically, if it's on the left some side of something, it goes to the left vanishing point. And if it's on the right side, it goes to the right vanishing point. The only place where those rules don't work is outside here. Um, that's where the rules flip. So like the right side is going to the left and the left side is going to the right. So they just flip to work in that space. And the next thing I want to do is start to fill in my colors. And for the ground and then for the ceiling, I want to have them be a dark blue gray. I kind of wanted them to be black just like in the game, but because I want to add a shadow underneath the pellets and the ghost and the cherries, I can't do them black because then what color would I do the shadow? So I'm going to be using a dark blue gray to fill those in. This is that dark gray, and I made it by using Mars Black um, with a little bit of titanium white and then a little bit of cyan just to make it a little bit cooler to match the cool tone of the rest of this. And I'm going to do all of the ground in it, and I'm also going to do all of the ceiling in this color. Um, and it's just dark enough for a little bit of Mars Black to show up too, and I tested that in my sketchbook. Um, so I'm just going to fill in a nice base layer of all of this color. I painted in the ground and remembered halfway through that I had wanted to round everything. Instead of having these sharp points, it would just have like a nice rounded corner on all the corners, but I forgot I had wanted to do that, so now I have to fix it. And I had done that in my sketch. You can kind of see everything just has all the corners rounded off. So I'm going to start by rounding all of the tops, paint the top, and then I'll fix the bottom and then paint in where I need to. My plan for the walls was to do a blue along all of the edges and then fade it into a darker blue or a black in the center. So I had done that in my sketch and then here in my sketchbook I also did a little bit of a test. I put down some Mars black just to kind of um, replicate this here and then I put cyan by itself to make sure it would show up um, on top of that black and I also did Prussian blue by itself just to see how dark it looked. And then I did a little bit of a gradient between the two down here. And I like how that looks. Um, and normally when you're playing like the top down view, all of like these shapes, you just kind of see like an outline of it. And I like that look and I kind of want to replicate that on the walls, even though like you don't know how they would look from Pac-Man's view. So I do kind of want to replicate the top down look just to bring that other element to it that you see as a player. The first thing I'm doing is taking the cyan and filling everything for the walls in with the cyan to give it a good base layer to make sure it's really bright and opaque um, because I want to make sure I really have that bright blue. Um, with the Prussian blue that I'm going to have in the middle of each of these walls, I don't want it to be pure Prussian blue, be really dark. Um, it'll kind of look like black paint when I put it down by itself, and I don't want that. I just want to kind of darken up the cyan and do it with the Prussian.
I'm liking the idea of this and the colors. Um, I just need to work on evening things out. Like this one's really dark and this one's really light and then I just kind of want to figure out exactly like the transition between some of these. Like this one kind of gets a bit bigger and this one like comes down further so it shouldn't be doing that with the perspective. I'm also going to pick um, where my light source is and I'm thinking about kind of having it out here so it's going to cast more of a highlight on this plane versus this plane. That way I can add a highlight and show this plane um, in a slightly different color than this one so you can see where they meet here and definitely see this corner. Now that the blocks have some value, I want to do the same on the ground. So I've taken my ruler and drawn parallel lines from each of these points going back towards the dark space. Um, so basically if it's dark, it's going to have a shadow cast on the ground. And then I took my ground color and just added a little bit more Mars black into it. And I'm just going to fill in these spaces right in here. I did a base layer of white for everything except every other pellet and then one of the cherries. And I did that because I didn't want to lose like where they overlap. I want to know where that changes between each pellet going back. So I'm going to do these in their full color and full value and then I'll switch and do the other ones. Now the pellets are kind of an off-white pinkish color and the cherry is red so I was thinking about what color I want to do the ghost and I decided to go with orange just because these are kind of pinkish color so I can't do them as the pink ghost and I can't do it as red because of the cherry and I think blue would just blend in too much for the walls so I decided to go with orange for Clyde. All of the elements I'm rendering a little bit more 3D than the actual game. Um, so I've turned these into spheres and done some extreme highlights on them to give them a really bright um, highlight mark and then a dark shadow. The ghost I've given a little bit of a highlight up here and then a little bit here. And the eye is going to get a little bit more work yet, but it's just blocked in with titanium white and cyan. As for the cherries, um, I've brought in a highlight here and then a shadow down here, and I'm going to be doing the same on this one. But I had to do this one first. And then I've also done the stems that way. I took burnt sienna for my main color, lightened it with titanium white for just a little bit of a highlight, and then used some burnt umber for the shadow parts underneath and then down here where it connects to the cherry.
last thing I have to do is add a shadow to the ground. Um, so what I did is I took my ruler and I kind of drew an imaginary line from like the light source, hitting the edge of the sphere and then casting it upon the ground on the left and the right side. And then I took my T-square and drew in this horizontal line here to make sure it was straight. And then I just very lightly drew in an ellipse. And I did the same with the rest of these, but in order to figure out how far this way they should go, I could take this line from the first one, line it up with my perspective mark, and draw myself in a line so I know they all come out to that line here on the ground. Um, I did the same with the ghost, I just kind of lined up where I want this light source to be and drew my line down, and then I took my T-square and drew in this line, and then just marked in a little bit of an ellipse. Now the cherries, I'm going to do the same thing, but I kind of have to think about both of them being here, and where they are in placement with each other. And we're done! We have a first-person view of Pac-Man. If you're interested in this piece, you could buy a poster or a phone case or bid on this original canvas. There's links down below. Also, consider supporting me on Patreon. You can find out more at supportmal.com. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss future episodes of Mal Makes, and I'll see you again here for another video game painting.